personally, I didn't feel fulfilled. And it was very disappointing because I, I had this whole image of myself. I had this goal of me being a civil engineer. Welcome to the Engineer Podcast. That's engineer with a J-E-N because I'm your podcast host, Jen. Now, this is a platform meant to add more soul to your STEM career. If you're a STEM student studying in nonstop stress, then listen to Jen's solo style episodes where she uses her five-year engineering degree to teach the inner work that you can do to study from soul rather than stress. And if you're a STEM student seriously questioning your career path, then listen to Jen interview previous engineers who switched from the traditional and aligned with the more soul-centered career field. Now follow me out of the fog and into your future. Let's listen in. Hello, everybody. Now, before I even get into today's episode, I want to acknowledge the current events that are happening around racial injustices, the protests and the activism around pain of those racial injustices to say that while I'm not an authority figure on that topic, while I'm not well seasoned in that area whatsoever, What I know I can offer at this time to all of you is my love, is my empathy, and is my support. To the people of color who follow me, to the people of color that I value, to the people of color that I love, if you want to vent, if you want to feel listened to, if you want to feel acknowledged, if you want to feel validated, if you want to feel heard, I am here for you. And I wanted to say that on this platform for you to hear it and feel it. I also want to have a call to action to people who have yet to voice that. For people who have yet to act in a positive way around this situation to start. Just start. Literally anywhere. There are so many different avenues that you can take to partake in activism and allyship. The obvious includes donating, signing petitions, having uncomfortable conversations with those in your life, and challenging certain ways of thought that are no longer serving or have never served our society positively. I personally felt called to offer my tiny platform to small black and brown businesses for free advertisement at the end of my episodes. There are a couple people that did sign up for this option, so I would seriously love and appreciate if you guys listen to this episode all the way through, one, to get Crystal's amazing life story and her amazing gems of advice to people in undergrad at this time, but also to support those voices at the end of the episode that you need to hear and listen to. And if you're interested, you can fill that out on my website, engineerpodcast.com. With that being said, we're going to dive into the topic of today's episode, which is a story around my friend Crystal. Crystal and I met back in 2017 when I first transferred to Cal Poly Pomona. In fact, she was in the first class that I ever enrolled in, which was my technical communications and documentation course. We got close quite quickly because in that class, you had to give speeches about who you are, what you believe, and what you value. And I just felt comfortable opening up to her about my doubts of becoming a civil engineer. And that is what sprouted a really supportive friendship between the two of us because we are now realizing that we're struggling with the same thing, hence the title of the episode. And that's exactly what this conversation is going to be about. But something that we dive into before expressing our doubts and our fears in this direction is Crystal's personal story towards her success which is that includes so much struggle it includes academic disqualification it includes roommate discrepancies it includes being first generation and not understanding how college exactly works and what is offered to you such as academic leave or counseling that she was completely unaware of we also talk about issues of self-worth issues of expectation management because what she expected to feel and experience with this milestone in life with this career choice is not matching with the reality of her circumstances so Something that I really wanted to make sure on my platform to do was not just highlight the engineers who found their soul-centered career went from A to B. 
I also wanted to document the process in between stages A and B, and that's what I feel this interview is. This is Crystal waking up to the values that she wants to drive her life around, Crystal realizing in reflecting on her past to project her into the future she does want to experience, and all the doubts, fears, traumas, worries in between during that journey. So if you resonate with the title, if you resonate with the quote, if you resonate with this current overview, this conversation is 100% for you, and I can't wait for you guys to listen to it. Hi everyone, we have my really good friend here. Her name is Crystal. Crystal, I'm so happy to have you on my podcast. <laughs> um, I would li- just like to start with a little bit of your background. Like, where are you currently working? Where did you graduate from? And then we're kind of going to work back to your story and then come back to where we are right now. So just a quick intro. Okay, so right now I work for the city of Cathedral City as an assistant civil engineer. And right now with this whole quarantine, I'm still working from home. So even my onboarding and everything was online, <laughs> which is really funny. But I like, I haven't met anyone. <laughs> everything has been through the phone. And, um, but that's my current position right now. I'm an assistant civil engineer. I graduated from Cal Poly Pomona August of 2019, last year. And I received my EIT on September my certificate yes girl (laughs) and yeah I majored in civil engineering got my bachelor's degree um for some time I was still you know a little bit dubious on what career path to take but we'll talk about that throughout this interview (laughs) and this is just sort of like kind of my background and where I am right now and you know if I'm satisfied or not but we'll we'll get to that some details (laughs) yes yes so what I do want everybody to understand is that Crystal is one of the top students at California. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, people need to know this. Girl killed the curve in every class she was in, okay? <laughs> Johnny, remember? <laughs> yeah, see, you and Johnny. And I just want people to understand, like, you stand here as so successful and powerful academically, career-wise, but you have had such a challenging past up to this point. So why don't you tell us where you started school? and a little bit about that journey, high school into university right away. Okay, well, in high school, I never really knew like what I wanted to do in my life. I never knew, so it was so frustrating when I, I was applying for colleges and choosing a major and like, I was always undeclared all the time. Like I went to Kelsey Fullerton undeclared. Okay. And then I changed it, um, I don't know why, I was, we were at the orientation and for some reason, somebody was talking to me about Chicano studies. I mean, even Chicano studies, I don't even know what it was. <laughs> or why like I had no passion in it like it was interesting but I was like I don't know I'm just gonna I'll just choose it I mean yeah for not knowing what to do my I'm a first generation college student nobody guided me into choosing a major in college so I just didn't know I made nobody even knows this my family's probably gonna laugh at me later you major in Chicano studies (laughs) anyway so I just (laughs) majored in that and but even being in college though I never in the dorms I was living in the dorms I was just not really motivated and it was so hard changing that environment from high school to college, that transition was not good for me at all. And this is why I'll just, you know, say it out there. I was academically disqualified in uh, my first year in Cassie Fullerton, but the major reasons for it was because one, I wasn't motivated or I even knew what I was doing in my life. Yeah. Two, my family was going through a rough patch. My parents were going through a divorce, a lot of fighting, and I was just, I didn't want to bother them with my problems that they were going through because at the time I also had problems in my dorm um, room with some of my roommates. Um, one of them would bring her boyfriend a lot and I just didn't feel comfortable and we would fight about it. So there was a point where I was even homeless. I would just sleep in my car. And like, I never told my parents this because like I said, I didn't want to bother them with my problems. Like they had enough problems of their own and I didn't like going home and, you know, telling them what was going on with me when I knew what they were going through. Yeah. So and I just didn't, also didn't want to worry them. Like you're the mm-hmm. first, you're the oldest of your siblings, right? Like you're the first to go to college and you don't want to come to them and be like, here's everything going wrong while I'm away yeah. from you, you know? <laughs> like, exactly. And so I just didn't, I never, you know, spoke about it with them. But, um, but yeah, that, and then also, like I mentioned, I did have problems with my roommates and then one of them who would bring her boyfriend a lot. Um, I actually got, you know, assaulted by him at the dorms. And I, it was a trauma that I 
I don't even know how I handled it, honestly. I did defend myself, thankfully, but I didn't know who to talk to about it. Like, I couldn't go to my roommates, obviously. I couldn't go, to, I, didn't, I didn't know if I can go to a counselor. I didn't even know we had those kind of services. I, I felt like I had to pay out of pocket myself. I don't have insurance. Yeah. And I didn't even know we were actually getting, you know, we paid for that as a student. Nobody, like, told me anything. Yeah, you had honestly. to find this all out after. <laughs> like, right. Like in orientation, all they gave me was like the four-year plan, like the the classes you need to take, and that's it. They never tell, they never told me about the services that we were actually provided. And you know, that's actually a requirement now. I see a lot of colleges and orientations because I actually um, led one two years um, ago for um, Cal Poly MEP. Mm -hmm. It's actually a requirement. You have to provide the student all the services we provide, whether it's counseling, the gym, everything. You know, everybody has to find out what they're offered. Yeah. And. You know, I did, but back then that was an offer. That was in 2012. I didn't, had no idea what I was, you know, offered. So I didn't talk to anyone about it. It was a trauma that I carried with me. I dealt with it on my own or in my own terms, you know, and yeah. I just never didn't go to class. And like, I was just very unmotivated, very sad and lonely. So yeah, that was basically the, like the major focal point of why I failed at Cal State Fullerton. Yeah. And I think another thing to mention too, like you said, you didn't really know how college worked or what was offered to you, you, you just kind of went from high school straight into Cal State Fullerton, thinking it probably works the same. And like, talk a little bit about your academic disqualification. So you were obviously going through a really tough time, you didn't know how to handle it. And you were, is it fair to say, in a bit of a depression? Yeah, like, I, I was, it was, I was very depressed. Yeah. And um, it's funny though, because like the classes that I did pass that I got like C's um, were like my math and science classes. Like the rest, yes, I just girl. didn't. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, so I'm kind of smart, okay? I have, <laughs> even in my worst, I'm kind of smart. It really took a toll on my self worth. Like, even though I knew that I was doing bad, knowing that I was disqualified, I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna tell my parents? Like, who am I? Like, am I that dumb that I couldn't even pass these classes on my first year in Kelsey Fullerton as a freshman? Supposedly, it's the easiest. Like, how? You know, like, I just couldn't. And then when I went back home, and then I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really tell my parents that I got disqualified. I just told them that I didn't want to go to school anymore, that I wasn't motivated, that it wasn't for me. I just told them, I'm going to just, I'm just going to work and I can see what happens. And that's what I did. That was 2012 to 2013, that um, academic year. So 2013, yeah. the rest of it, I just worked full time. Um, it was what did you agency. do? I was just an office assistant for like I got it through an agency. Okay. Yeah. Okay, girl. I mean, you still transitioned into what yeah. was working <laughs> for you. So I just started working, and then, um, but it's funny because okay, from there, my journey into construction began through um, both my cousin and my boyfriend. So my boyfriend, he works in construction. He's a foreman, mm -hmm. and my cousin has a construction cleanup business. So sometimes he would tell me, hey, well, um, would you be down to, you know, just this weekend work with me in that company? I'm like, sure. So I would sometimes go with my cousin and I would work with him. And then other weekends I'd work with my um, my boyfriend and he would teach me how to read plans. Because my boyfriend, he went to school for this. He went to school to plan interpretation, for plan interpretation and estimating. So mm -hmm. he knows a lot of construction, like, you know, reading plans and he's very savvy. So he taught me a lot of that, and I started liking it. Like I want to go when I would go to the jobs with him. Like I would um, figure out how much you know concrete we would be using, how much material we would need, and I started liking it. And then um, he told me about the class that he took. But then I talked with other you know supervisors. They're on the job site. That some of them had their their civil engineering license. Some of them had their bachelor's degree. Yeah. And they asked me, "Why don't you go back to school? Like you're still young. You can do it. Like and you like this." And I said. Yeah, but I don't know what I what is this major? What, what are we, how, is it construction? Like what what kind of yeah, major? Yeah, like what? <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> so he said, "Well, I have my civil engineering um, degree, so you should probably you know major in that. It's going to be a lot of math, a lot of science." He's like, oh, "Okay, well, I'm good at math. I can probably do it." And then that's when I went to community college. I enrolled 2014 January 2014 in Citrus College, and that's where it all began. Oh my goodness. So it was truly like visiting these job sites and then people kind of letting you know, hey, you could do this too. Like, right. why don't you try it? I love that. So you went into community college thinking civil engineer. Exactly. Like that was my goal. And so then, yeah, then, like I mentioned, when I started Citrus, like I just started taking all the physics, all the math, and I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, like from there, like my goal was just civil engineering. That was like my main goal. So just once I finished there, then I applied to a bunch of colleges. 
But it's funny because I was so scared that colleges wouldn't accept me because of my disqualification. And since right. so none of my friends knew about my disqualification, it was so hard. It was like this secret you had inside of you and you yes. couldn't talk about oh it. Oh my God. You. So all my friends, they would all get it, getting accepted to um, these colleges and universities. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I haven't heard back or I was either on a wait list because of my disqualification and like I wouldn't they would ask me also oh, how are you doing you for sure you know you already got into a UC or something and I'm like if only you knew <laughs> so like embarrassed oh my god is this one of the first times people are gonna hear that yeah actually or do they know now <laughs> only Johnny knew he was the only one that I told later because I was crying like you know I was I was wait waitlisted for Cal Poly Pomona because that was the school that I wanted to go to I wait, really wanted I didn't to go. know that yeah I was waitlisted because of my disqualification and it wasn't until like I, I I would I told them my story. I was like, you know what? It's time to talk about it. I need to write an essay. So I literally just wrote. It wasn't even a petition because I wasn't you know denied. It was just a random essay that I wanted someone to hear. I sent the letter to several faculty. I don't even know who read it. I just read, sent it to faculty and the administrative office and anyone that would take my story. And the next thing I knew, within a week, I I got accepted. I they let me in, and I showed Johnny. I was crying. I was like, oh, I'm in. I'm in. Oh my God, so you literally funny. just gave me the <laughs> So, so a little bit, just to understand, so when you went back to community college, like, it sounds to me like you went, like, hard. Like, yeah. you were freaking ready to go back to school. So, were you, like, a 4.0 student in community college? Like, I was 3.97, yes. So I was yes, very <laughs> Academic disqualification to 3.97. Yeah. And like, I brought that, I took that, I even printed out like my, my transcripts and everything for them to see, like, look, I really like improve. Like, I really want this. Like, I know my disqualification, you know, that seems, that looks bad on my record, but that's not, that doesn't define who I am. Like, I am a hard worker. I know I can do this. And I don't know. I want to know who read my letter or who let me in. Like, I just want to know. Like, <laughs> I just want to know, but you know, thank God I was in and able to, you know, finish my career. <laughs> That is so funny. Oh my God, that's amazing. So then after you were waitlisted and then a week later accepted, you started at Cal Poly Pomona and how was that transition for you? Oh, oh my God, girl. Okay. So my first year at Cal Poly, I actually really enjoyed it. I was really like enjoying the classes, everything that I was learning, um, you know, doing well in my classes. I kept my good GPA, working hard. I was involved in several organizations at school. I was an ambassador for the Maximizing Engineering Potential program, and I was also a tutor on campus. So I was really involved, and I really liked my year, my first year there. The second year, the year that I graduated, um, this is what already 2019, right? 2017, 20, yeah, 2019. Okay. <laughs> um, realized that I wasn't taking as much interest in my classes as before. Like the passion just wasn't there anymore. I don't know what it was. And it wasn't even so much like, at first I thought, okay, maybe it was because I was like, oh, I like the challenge of being, you know, like studying hard and getting a good score on a test or, you know, seeing how well I can do on certain exams and learning about the material and applying it to projects, applying it to real life, you know. So at first I thought, okay, maybe it's because we're not doing as much or the group projects are killing me or I don't know what it was. I started losing my passion for it. I was just not caring. At a point I was just studying to get the test done. I wasn't even interested in the subject anymore. You know, there were times where like I, I wouldn't even study that. I would just go over like, the study guide and see what, what I captured from class and take the test as it was. And I, I still did well, but I wasn't as passionate anymore. I started losing my interest in it. Yeah. And to this day, I still don't know what, what it is. Like, I, I don't know, <laughs> you don't but know it was a very tough thing year. That triggered a change in mentality. I, I wonder, like, because I know that you and I have both talked about this, like being such strong students, sometimes we can work just because of what people expect from us, mm -hmm. right? Like people expect us to be a good student. Professors are expecting us to perform really well. Like Sometimes when you're a good student, it actually gives you more work because people trust your work more and they want to see more from you and they push you and they push you and they push you. Right. So I wonder if there was a sense of like burnout or a there sense was. of like... Like when I was taking, like I, I try to think back, okay, when was I enjoying my year? What classes did I really feel like, ooh, like I can stay up all night, not because I have to, but because I want to. <laughs> like it was uh, like my math classes I really enjoyed like studying like solving problems like that was like my niche I loved it I just loved 
studying for math. I don't know. I sound like super nerdy right now. People are like laughing at me, but I just loved it. But then when it came to like the actual civil engineering classes, I'm like, oh, I don't want to stay up late like to study for this, for this exam, this report, this project. I'm just like, I'm not feeling it. I don't know what it is. I'm just not, you know, and it's a, it's a sense of like burnout. Like you said, like we're just tired. It's yeah. just like a sense of not, not non-satisfaction. You don't feel fulfilled with what you're doing. Was civil engineering what you thought it was going to be? Like, because I know for me, this is going to sound so stupid, but, <laughs> you know, I didn't know what I was doing either. Um, I picked civil engineering at an event at USC. I went to, like, a booth, and they had all the engineering students, and one of the booths was civil engineering, and they had, like, plans, and they had, like, 3D models mm -hmm. of buildings. Um, I had you have you ever watched those HGTV shows? <laughs> I'm dead ass. I thought it was like that. I I'm not even kidding you. I thought civil engineering was like that. So I was like, oh my god, this table reminds me of HGTV. I love HGTV. I'm a pick civil engineering. And then I get to my classes, and that's not what civil engineering <laughs> is. <laughs> but at this oh point. God. At this point, I was four years into the damn game, okay? By the time <laughs> I found out, and I was like, okay, well, I have one year left. Now I'm going to be designing stormwater treatment. And, like, <laughs> that's not what I thought. So, like, I don't know. Did that happen? Like, you had this vision of what it was like from your boyfriend and your cousin, and then did you get to the material and was like, uh, this isn't what I thought, or? Yeah, because, like, okay, when we take... Well, I, I never took concrete, and that's actually, it's just funny, because people are like, oh my god, you're supposed to take concrete in all these classes to be successful. You don't, okay? You don't need all, any of that. I took steel, people. I took steel. I have not used any single formula from steel on my job, in my internships. I, I have never used it, okay? Never. And then if you look at a plan, the only the only class that's actually relevant to a plan, to a work construction plan construction it's surveying. You're gonna see the staking you're gonna see the stations surveying oh, that's pretty okay. much all the, yeah that's all gonna like that's the only relevant class serving that's really for sad. plants <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah and then if you take um i don't know if you guys i mean a lot of people who are watching this it, this is the equivalent of your college class it's for us it's called design the role of design engineering professionals you know yeah. what I'm, yeah. EGR 4050. Mm -hmm. That one's actually really relevant. So pay attention to that class because you will be looking all at all the contracts. contracts. Mm -hmm. You will be looking at a lot of contracts, a lot of estimates. You're going to have to know how to talk to people, how to negotiate yeah. because that's the major of the business. That's the nature of it. Like you have to know, you know, if you're going to get that deal or not, if you're going to get that job because that, without money, nothing's going to be made, not done. So, right. and like I, I learned a lot about myself and I'm still learning about myself. Like what my role my career is going to take me like because when i was a student um uh, citrus and cal poly i always took i worked every summer i worked at an internship for skanska my year after my first year at um, cal poly so that heavy civil firm um <laughs> skanska right away for your yeah. first internship that's amazing so i did that and it was um once again it was a bridge i think the bridge this is still getting built in l.a Okay, that project, so hard. Like, I didn't even know what was going on half of the time. I had to teach myself a lot of things, read the plans myself. And there's so many components to a bridge that you don't get taught in class. Like, you're, you get to the job and you're like, what? What am I looking at? I don't know yeah. what spec this I is. I don't know what. Is. Yeah, it was very difficult. And that was the first internship that made me realize, okay, I don't want big projects. I can't work in, like, heavy civil, like, projects, like bridges and any of that. So I was like, okay, think smaller scale. Like, what is it that you really like? When I would work with my boyfriend, I like going to houses and fixing them up. That's what I like. I like smaller scale, residential homes, or even commercial, like, offices, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, pimping them up. <laughs> so I really, that's how I kind of learned a little bit about myself, that I like, you know, smaller scale. But then I applied, I don't know why I applied for a Disney internship, because it had nothing to do with what I'm studying. But um, it just came to me when it said civil engineering internship, Disney. And then I went to a workshop and one of some of the recruiters were there and they were talking about what they do. And it sounded interesting. So I applied, but I worked there on, oh my God, Jenny, I learned so much about myself there. Yeah, uh, I, heard, I've, I've heard this before, but people need to hear this too. So you chose Disney because it's fucking Disney. Like, yeah, right. I you just have to have Disney, Disney on your resume. Okay. <laughs> 
And then they even told me like, oh, you're going to be in the project management team. I'm like, okay, I don't even know what the hell they do, but sure. I'll just, I'll go there. It's Disney. So <laughs> I went to Disney and um, I, you know, I was working. My first week was great, but then little by little, I started noticing that I wasn't really enjoying it. A lot of the stuff that they would do is more mostly maintenance. And it makes sense. It's Disney. It's already built. What are you building? You know, not unless you're in the oh, WDI, which is Walt Disney Imagineering. That's a more creative side. Mm -hmm. And that's when they're going to build new uh, attractions that they're actually, you know, creating something from nothing. But other than that, what we were doing, civil engineers, they just basically perform inspections, make sure everything's up to par, like all the water, <laughs> all the uh, piping systems, maintenance, all the machinery is working. But that's pretty much it. And it was very boring for me. Yeah. So, so I didn't really find myself passionate about it. And then... I noticed a lot of the people there, it was, there was a lot of competition, you know, there was a lot of young people there. So promotions was like in the back of their mind all the time. They didn't even care about teaching newcomers, but that was just my department. I don't want to speak bad about Disney. Don't sue me. Um, that was just <laughs> my department. I don't think they can. So, and some people, everybody works differently, right? So that just didn't work for me. I like a very collaborative environment. I like where I can talk to people and ask questions and not feel stupid for asking questions. And that's just me. So... Yeah, I wasn't very glamorous working at Disney. I want to dive deeper into that. So, like, I really want to understand. You have this goal since community college. You start getting it. You start getting big-name companies. And then you're not happy. No. Like, what does that feel like? Like, what were you thinking? Were you scared? Were you disappointed? Were you, like, I want very to disappointed. that. I was very disappointed. Both of those internships really, like, <laughs> they scarred me. <laughs> I was very disappointed because it, I came to the realization that it's not what I thought it would be. You know, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Like, even when I, when I imagine myself drafting, like, okay, I'm going to design these great new architectural buildings, right? Even when I was drafting at Skanska, because I asked them, like, you know what, I kind of want to learn how to design. You know, I, wanna, I really want to get into that portion of my career. Even when I started doing it, I was like, oh, my God, this is so boring. Like, I cannot do this forever. You know, I just can't, I, I personally, I didn't feel fulfilled. And it was very disappointing because I, I had this whole image of myself. I had this goal of me being a civil engineer, you know, having that name, that company in my resume did help me, you know, get into, into Disney or it helped me get into the career that I am right now. It didn't even matter at the end because I wasn't happy. Yeah. And then being in Disney, oh my God, it's a whole can of worms. The name itself, at first it did attract me, but, um, I guess the people when the the recruiters that went to the workshop made it sound great made it sound like oh my god this is like the career of a lifetime yes this is my passion you're gonna like be so happy here but no okay like I said I was disappointed when I started working there I realized I wasn't feeling fulfilled or like that passion like oftentimes Jenny I would go home crying I'm like oh my god I don't feel fulfilled today I don't know what I did today I don't feel like this is taking me where I want to be in my life like I would just I was so sad. I'm like, what, the, what am I going to do with my life? Like, if I were to quit this job, what am I going to do? Yeah. Like, am I just going to get another work. another civil engineering job that I'm going to hate because I don't like the work itself? Like, wh what am I going to do? You know? So. And also, everybody's watched you graduate. Everybody knows your story for how successful you've been. All your professors are probably like, oh, my God, where are you at now? And you just say, Disney, and that's the end of the conversation. But they don't know, like, actually I'm at Disney and I'm not happy and I have no idea where I'm going to go with my life. <laughs> like, exactly. I don't know how to become happy. This is all I know, but you know, I'm at Disney. So everyone thinks I'm fine. Right. <laughs> right. And we're not, I mean, I wasn't, I don't know. So I don't know. I wanted to hear other people's like story, other civil engineers like that graduated with me and see how they're doing. But because when I would hear like everybody talk about their careers, where they're at right now, I'm like, okay, they sound like, you know, they're satisfied with it, but how do they get to that point? Or is it just me that is not like feeling that satisfaction or feeling like, oh, I, I did it. You know, I don't feel like I've done it. I reached my goal, if that makes sense. Because yeah. I realized that my goal is not just to have that title, to be part of that big name company, but to also be satisfied with my job, you know? I think sometimes what happens to me is like when I voice, I don't know if I can do this and I say the same things that you do, people are like, oh, it's just because it's new. It's just because you haven't learned yet. Like, how do you know that it's not just because you're new and you know that it's because this isn't for you? Like, how do you know the distinction between I'm just a newbie and it's hard right now, but it's going to get better? Versus I know for a fact this doesn't make me happy. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it until I figure out what I want. 
for you know me, I, mean? I guess it was the time with Disney. I, I, at first, I said, okay, this is just the beginning. I'm learning, you know, it's normal. I'm probably struggling right now because I'm an intern and this is just the beginning of it. But dude, after like my first half of my, the internship, six months, I still wasn't happy. And like, I felt like I, even then I wasn't learning enough. I wasn't learning what I wanted to learn. I, maybe I for sure know that I am not like doing civil engineering forever like I am not retiring as a civil engineer I don't know what I'm gonna retire as but it's not gonna be civil engineering (laughs) no like you already are like set like this is not for me I'm only gonna use it to like fund my passions and my dreams whatever those are that I'm still discovering (laughs) yeah no and like you laugh but like yes that's what you should do that's what I'm doing this is just an observation I could totally be wrong but are you stepping closer to the idea that work doesn't have to be the thing that makes you happy? Because it kind of sounds like it. It kind of sounds like you're starting to accept that work might not be like the thing you're passionate about, but that you can have something else in your life that will give you some sense of happiness and passion. Yeah, like I used to think, okay, I need to find something that makes me happy, right? Like we're so focused. I think right now in our culture is very all the people that entrepreneurship, right? Do something that you love, work when some, in an industry that you love, that you are passionate about. But I kind of came to the realization that not, there's no such thing as a dream job. You know, it's just, it's what you make of it. At the end of the day, it's like, okay, I can accept doing some paper pushing, right? But if I can get to working with other people that are very collaborative and they're very, you know, helpful in my career overall, if the day overall is good, then I don't mind doing some, you know, whatever menial tasks or mundane tasks. And as long as you make, like I I think I told you this already, I like to spend at least one or two, two hours a day doing something that I like, whether it's watching a movie or going for a run or reading a book or something. Like I like to do something that I like to do. That way your day doesn't feel like it was all about work. Whether you had problems (laughs) at work, it's not just about work. You know, you make it something else as well, distract yourself. So yes, I, I would say, yeah, like I have, I definitely shifted my focus from making my job my passion and making it simply like a how can I say this something that you have to do but that you can live with (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's like it's what you have to do to do what you want to do exactly um but there are so many things like I want to do sometimes like I want to have like a tutoring program to like an online tutoring program for kids and for students because I just really like that I really like helping people especially when it comes to like difficult classes that a lot of kids are scared of and I hate that they since they're small they're like scared of math or scared of science because they make it seem so difficult some teachers you know and it's it's, I mean it doesn't have to be it could be but it doesn't have to be you can make it simpler for them so definitely something like that or something along those lines I I really don't know yet (laughs) Yeah. No, I'm just curious, like, what ideas have popped into your head that, like, I know you're still discovering what you like and what you're passionate about and, like, what gives you a sense of, like, purpose and fulfillment. Like, what ideas have popped in? So I love the tutoring thing. I personally think that, like, tutoring and teaching others is in your zone of genius somewhere. (laughs) Like, I really, and especially because you said that something that really does give you fulfillment is, like, helping others and having them see their own potential and their own ability like that's why it gives you such a deeper like fulfillment because you're like I'm helping this person not just academically but like I'm helping them see their own potential like you know because they I tell them like you know what um I failed a lot of times I failed a lot of these difficult classes they I would never in a million years would see myself taking these classes and now I'm succeeding in them, you know? So it's more of like when I show them um, a problem on the board or something and I help them through it and I walk them through it, making it easier for them is what I thrive in. I love making something seem easier, something seem understandable for them to reach understanding, you know? And mostly because I, it's like a personal thing for me as well. Um, when I got disqualified at Castle Fullerton, a lot of the times people would referred to me as oh my gosh she's too dumb she's too stupid she couldn't even finish her degree there um so a lot of the times that like kind of stuck with me and then I said no you know what I'm not it's not that I'm incompetent simply nobody has shown me the easier route there's always so many different ways to look at something you know so to understand something and me being that like pipeline for people to understand for people to learn 
is what gives me it's like rewarding for me yeah you know like I know that the only or not the only reason but one of the main reasons why I went towards engineering was because I had amazing math professors and amazing science professors like elementary middle high school and community college if I had experienced a professor that like wasn't teaching me well that um, wasn't passionate about what they were talking about or passionate about helping me understand I would not have become an engineer at all like I feel like I just got lucky that I had such great professors but not everybody has that and I think that's what you do you help them see like hey you you probably learned from a professor that like this subject isn't for you but I want to help reveal to you that like you can do this regardless of what you felt in the past girl start your own tutor business <laughs> I should, huh? something that I do want to talk about that you mentioned in the very beginning was self-worth mm-hmm. and so I really want you to touch on that what was your journey with self-worth and your titles been so far so I guess like I said before I I measured my self-worth and success um through my titles, through my grades, through even people measure it through salary, right? Money. People that's how they that's how they measure it. When you hear a student, oh, say like, oh, I'm gonna I'm making this much money in my internship or this much money now as an assistant civil engineer or a beginning civil engineer, you use that as a metric to say, okay, where do I stand? Where do I how much should I be making as well? You know? And when I first began my career, when I not working but academic career when I first began I measure myself my success through grades like I would say okay I need to get straight as a semester to you know rise my GPA this much blah 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 and you know receiving recognitions like I lived off of that a lot because that's how I measure myself I'm like okay if school is all I have then I better make sure this is what I I succeed in you know I make sure I, I do well in it when you know school's over and you graduate you don't have that anymore you're just like you're like in shock like okay how do I measure myself now yeah your identity is like being questioned right like I don't have those you know recognitions anymore like I have the title but what nobody's talking about anymore so what what who am I now you know (laughs) like what am I so now your next metric of success becomes salary either salary or promotions or your titles at work that's like your next metric of success that I've noticed. I don't want to speak for everyone, but that's what yeah, I've noticed. For you personally. Right. This is the progress you've noticed. Mm-hmm. And I realize like, I'm not happy though. Even if, if, you know, I have, I feel like even if I were to have those titles or if I were to have those promotions in the future, if I'm not happy right now, what makes me think that's going to make me happy later? You know, yeah. like it, it has to be a, like an internal satisfaction that you have with your job or feeling like you have a sense of purpose. Like I want to have a sense of purpose, you know, and fulfillment. And right now my current job, something that does give me purpose are the projects that are for the communities. For example, we're building parks for the kids, right? And we're also building um, sidewalks for people that don't have cars for low income communities. So they walk a lot, they tend to bike a lot. So that gives me a sense of purpose because okay, I'm helping others. Like I, it goes back to helping others. I was a tutor at Cal Poly. I really enjoy helping others. Yes, girl, you were the top yeah. tutor. <laughs> Literally, everybody went to you for every class. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, those give me a sense of purpose. So see, projects like those, I feel, give me a sense of purpose, and I've learned to shift my focus on that rather than on my title and my salary. Don't get me wrong. You know, money is important. Everybody needs money. You know but I'm not making it my priority or my main success, like metric of success for life. That's what I'm trying to say. I think that was something really big that I had to do too. Like I definitely chased the title for prestige and for giving me a sense of importance and like people assume intelligence, like with that title. Right. Um, and that worked for a really long time. Like that worked. I got straight A's for a while. That got me to Cal Poly. That got me through, you know, like I used to judge that part of myself so hard because now I don't value that as much. And I was like, wow, Jenny, were you really that vain? Were you really that like, um, you know, chasing that kind of value? But I think lately what I've tried shifting to is like honoring that part of myself. Like, no judgment. Like, you know what, Jen, it's okay to value that. And when you did value that, it got you here. So like, thank you. I appreciate it, but it no longer works for me. And that's okay. Um, 
so I think too, like, just acknowledging, like, you were doing the best you could with the best that you knew. And there was nothing wrong with chasing that for a while. But you know, now it's not serving you anymore. And that's okay. Um, but it's just scary to let go of something that has ran your life for so long. Right. And like, I like the title, especially like as a low income Latina and females in the engineering industry, like exactly. having that, you know, for us, going for us, we always thought, I mean, speaking for you and me, um, yeah. we felt like a sense of satisfaction. We felt like, you know, prestige, you know, so, and then when, you, but then you realize like, okay, like you're not going to have those, like, how do I say, those praises all the time. You know what I'm saying? It gets old. So what really matters, it comes down to how satisfied you are with your career, with your, with yourself as a person, you know, and you learn how to identify yourself, with your individualism. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, like I said, it all comes down to what you really value. And like something that really stuck with me from Gary V is, you know, stop setting arbitrary goals. For example, people that say, I want to be a millionaire by 30, you know, when I'm 30, or I want to have my degree in four years. Like, why are you setting arbitrary goals that the time has nothing to do with your goals? But what it has to do the most is how, not how fast you can achieve them, but how well you can achieve them. Yeah. And, right, and most of all, how you feel when you achieve them. How do you feel when you achieve them? Do you feel satisfied? Do you feel like, eh, okay, like, what's next? Yeah. And like, that's where I am right now. Like, okay, what's next? What am I going to do next in my life? <laughs> For you, I'm curious, like, because I'm, you brought up a really great point. How did you feel when you achieved these things? Like, when you got the degree, how did it feel? When you got that job, how did it feel? And how quickly did it, did it vanish? That's actually an amazing question. <laughs> when I got my degree, um, obviously, oh, sorry. <laughs> you feel, like, this great sense of satisfaction, like, achievement. Like, oh, my God, I achieved this, like, my years of sleepless nights and you know, hard work and going to office hours, working with other people. Finally, you finished it. Like, I finished this degree. I have it in my hand. Like, yeah. okay. And it's an amazing okay. feeling, amazing accomplishment. But it dies down quickly, just like any other, you know, graduation ceremony. Like, after a few days, okay, you're kind of like, not over. I mean, you still feel very content, very happy where you are. But it doesn't last forever, you know. I, I know for me, it took me years, literally years to admit that this wasn't making me happy. Like I spent years trying to convince myself that that wasn't true. Like I knew I wasn't happy, but I was like, nah, that's a lie. Nah, I'm gonna feel happy again. <laughs> nah, like, Jen, what are you talking about? You've been studying since you were 13. Of course, this is what you want. Like I spent so long denying that I wasn't happy and like trying to convince myself, you know? Like, what about you? Where did you go through that? Where you didn't want to admit that? Yeah, I didn't. And I was like, okay, this face is kind of lasting a little long, so <laughs> <laughs> you get the face. I'm like, mm, it must be something else. And then, yeah, like when I, I feel like even to the the last class that I took, it was over the summer because I was, you know, finishing my degree. And I, in the summer of 2019, I took steel. Oh my God, I hated that class I hated it with a passion like you have no idea it was so bad and it was to when I realized that I didn't like it Jen was when I realized I didn't care that I got an A minus I was like okay at least I don't, I don't care I used to be so adamant and I'm saying this because I was so adamant about getting A's like actual like 97% A's like I wanted A's straight A's in my report card and to not even care, I'm like, okay, A minus, whatever. I'm not even going to go talk to him. I'm <laughs> fighting for a point. I'm not going to talk to him. I just don't yeah. care. Yeah. I realized this is not for me. I'm like, I would have been fighting. I would have been so passionate about, you know, uh, understanding the class. And I just didn't. That is such a big, like, gap uh, in change in personality. Because seriously, like, that was you. You were the student in every professor's office hours, like, yeah. every week asking them questions, doing the homework ahead, studying every minute. And then at the end of your degree, you're like, I forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people can relate. They're going to be like, oh my God, A minus, Crystal, relax. But there's no people like, you don't know me. Like I was very like adamant. 
<laughs> people yeah. like professors knew my name yeah. because I would go to their office hours so often and that was me so but everyone's different so they're probably gonna be like Crystal you're crazy you used to pass <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about this before where we feel as students like because we made school everything, we feel like we lost ourselves. Like we don't know what we're interested in. We don't know what we like because we've always done what we should be doing, right? Like I really want you to talk about that because I know we've had such deep conversations about it before. You know, we always made school because I was very, like I said, I was a very involved on campus. So I didn't work during the school years. It was always just summers. So school was like my main, like it was always my main thing in my life like I made it like my focal point like of my life like I I I later I, I it's not that I regret it but I do feel bad for not giving more time like to myself and to my family I would neglect that time that quality time with them because I was so focused on studying like I would make that my priority I would drop down drop everything and study just to make school my priority like that's how important it was for me because I was so and I guess because it also you know has to do with my disqualification I was so scared to fail again that I made it, I was obsessed. I was obsessed with getting straight A's. I was obsessed with it. And it was to a point where it was unhealthy. Like there were times where I would drink like five cups of coffee a day and that's all, I know you're talking about coffee, but it was it was such, so bad. Like it, it was, my health, like it was diminishing. It was very, very bad. Like there were points where I was sleeping like four or five hours a night if I was lucky. Like it was really bad. I was taking it way too serious. Yeah. And exactly. then when I graduated, I was like, oh my God, like all I had was school. Like, I don't know who I am, who, how do I identify myself? Like, I define myself by grades. I define myself by my degree. I define myself by my EIT, having certifications and titles and, you know, recognitions. That's how I define myself. So who am I as a person? Like, it was so difficult to, you know, define myself after graduation. Like, in the workplace, like, I don't know who, what kind of group of coworkers I identify with the most. Like, you didn't spend time developing your own interests. So then that actually, okay, I have a little bit of a story. <laughs> At my job, we had, like, a hiking event. And one of my coworkers picked me up. And it was with another coworker. And he asked me, he was like, so, Jenny, like, when you're not studying, what do you like to do? And I didn't have an answer. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I felt like an idiot. And I was like, how do I let this guy know that all I fucking do is be a student? And like, I, it was like an existential like crisis for me to realize that the only part of who I am and can talk about is being a student. I was like literally sitting in the back of the car, like, how do I relate to other people? Like, I don't have any interest. I don't watch, I'm not into pop culture. I'm not paying attention to music exactly. or TV or like, I can't talk about anything other than school with anybody. And that, I think that was one of the moments where I realized, like, holy shit, I've taken this title so seriously for so long that this is the only part of who I am right now. And that's so disheartening to, like, realize. And so all these, they start to resurface, all these yeah. things that you thought um, were okay to neglect for school, you know, they start coming to the surface and you realize, like, like wow, this was so important in my life that I never gave it the chance and then even when you were done studying for like an exam, like you would, like, you know how you would still continue studying for like the next class. Okay, well, I better start reviewing now because I only have this much time to, you know, review for the exam and I want to be prepared and I don't want to be stressed the day before. So you start reviewing for the exam that's not even due in like two weeks. So you're constantly studying, yet you weren't even like resting. Yeah. Yeah. You always knew that there was more to do. There, there was never a sense of, okay, I'm done. It was, I'm done with this thing. I have to worry about this other thing. I have to work on this and work on that. And mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, you're never resting. Your, your mind is never even in the moment that you're in. Your mind is always thinking about what else you have to do to remain that perfect student. And it's exhausting. But something that happened to me is, even though I knew that wasn't healthy, mm -hmm. I had done it for so many years. Like, I didn't know how to let go of that habit. Oh my then, God, that's me. Yeah, like, I knew it wasn't right. And then, but that was how I lived for so long that I didn't know how else to live. And then I, I lived with, like, an extra layer of judgment because I was like, fuck you, Jen. I know this is horrible. I know this is so unhealthy. Why are you doing this? So I'm still doing it. And then I hate myself for it. And then, like, 
and the, I don't know, it was like such a cycle of like self judgment, but I couldn't, I couldn't let it go. And then another thing that happens is like, I think what would happen is I would tell myself that it's temporary, like, oh, I'm only not hanging out with my boyfriend temporarily, I'm only not seeing my family temporarily, I'm only not sleeping or not eating or not whatever temporarily girl i've been in this degree for five years at some point that's not temporary yeah i definitely feel like that. i can totally relate to it then because that was literally me and like in the and i wasn't even living at school i should have just lived at school because i was there all the time literally 24 7 but i would literally just go home to sleep and then it, it even gave me that sense of like okay am i just like living at home to just sleep like I don't, I don't even there were times where I wouldn't even see my family for days because I would get home and they were already asleep and you would so leave it's at like 6 a.m yeah so it was like the same thing as living in the dorms basically and I'm like this is not healthy this is not the fact that I don't even get to rest my brain rest see my family or spend time with my boyfriend because there would even there would be weeks that we, would, we wouldn't even see each other like it was bad like neglecting all those relationships you know, they do take a toll on your mental health. Mm -hmm. So, and like, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say that I regret being who I was because it did get me to where I am right now, but I do regret not taking care of myself more. I always say that. And I say that right now to my family, my friends, everyone, I, I regret not, you know, spending more time with you or spending more time with my family and, you know, um, taking care of myself, sleeping more. I wasn't sleeping well. I wasn't taking care of myself. I, I let the stress take over me. Yeah. I think in so many ways, like, I don't know if you feel this way, but I do. Being a straight A student, being that straight A, like, perfectionist actually set me up to fail in so many other areas of my life. I have no idea how to self-care. I have no idea how to have balance. I have no idea how to, like, manage my time so that I work out, see my family, care about myself. Like, in a lot of times, for me, I believe that being a straight A student just means how well you can follow other people's directions. So a, a product of that habit that I've learned for so long is I don't feel confident when I have to make my own decisions. Like I've always been guided, like professors tell me what to do or my parents tell me what to do or a counselor tells me what to do. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm in my 20s and I have to decide what I have to do, I have no confidence in it. So what advice would you give somebody who isn't feeling happy, who is kind of in the same position? Like, what would you tell them to start getting towards steps of happiness? Like, if you're doing this for someone else, if you're getting your degree to satisfy, like, your parents or your family, like, you're not going to be, and you're, and you're not enjoying it, then don't, like, I would say just change your major. You're, it's never too late to do something else that you are truly passionate about and that you truly enjoy learning about even if it's stressful if there's like a there's different types of stress and that's what another whole other podcast but um if you find yourself stressed but enjoying a certain topic and you feel like you want to keep pursuing that subject i would say definitely go for it um like i i would say like i i were i did enjoy some of my classes and i did you know receive my degree not only to satisfy my parents but myself um but People sometimes they get a certain degree because they say, "Oh, well, my parents like don't won't let me study anything else." Or like, I, that's what I've heard. Like, they, yeah, their no, parents get their education, time. you know, so they're always forced either to do engineering or some other type of very difficult major, and they're not happy in it, happy in it, or succeeding. So, I just want to put that out there and tell people that. Yeah, I totally agree. And in, in my opinion, being able to do that is one of the bravest things that you can do. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> being a straight A student is almost like being a people pleaser like that is what you're doing like when you're you're paying attention to what your professors want from you what you know what this class is demanding from you but when you're able to like have all these voices telling you what to do but still following yourself i think that's like one of the biggest like examples of strength like i wasn't strong enough to do that like i knew in my third year, when I found out what civil engineering actually was, that I didn't like it, that I didn't want it, but I was way too scared to change directions because I didn't even know what direction I would go down if it wasn't engineering. 
And so I, I know a lot of people can look at students who switch directions or look at students who drop out or look at students who go after something else as like, oh, they couldn't handle it. Oh, they're, you know, mm -hmm. but I view it so differently. I'm like, damn, that person is so strong in themselves that they can go against what everyone else is telling them. Like that is brave and that right. is strong. So that's why I tell people, don't be afraid to either stop when you, you, your career right now that you're not happy with. Take a leave of absence, try something new, um, take other classes, the online classes, anything that you feel like you had kind of like an interest in and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, nurture it to see where it will take you because you don't know where it can take you. Yeah, something that used to happen to me all the time is I would kind of tell myself, I won't let go of engineering until I know what else I want to do. Like, I want to have a plan. Like, oh, I want to be able to tell people, hey, I'm no longer doing engineering, but I have this plan to do this other thing instead. Like, that is what felt more safe. Um, and that made me feel like I would be more understood if I had this, like, explanation. But my Thea explained it to me, and I'll kind of explain it in terms of, like, vectors, actually. You know how in order for a vector to change directions, it has to hit zero? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what my Thea was basically trying to tell me. She was like, Jenny, how are you going to change directions when you're moving in one direction? Like, like when you have your car going down the road of civil engineering, you're going to crash if you try to look around to see where else you can go. Like, you have to stop civil and then, like, be open to other directions. You can't, like, go down this path the whole time and then say eventually that you're just going to, like, you know? I don't know. So that was, that's something that what you just said kind of reminded me of. Like, if you're, if you do feel like you want to change directions, but the only thing holding you back is that you don't know what it would be, just take space, take space and let yourself have no title for a little bit and get to know who you are without it. And then feel like you're going to find what you need. Knowing everything that you've gone through and what you're feeling now, what's like the top piece of advice that you would give Crystal like a few years ago? And the girl that's in that position right now, like, what do you think she needs to hear? Stop using your past to define your future. <laughs> stop using the disqualification. Stop using your trauma. Stop using everything as excuses for you to be so focused just on school and just um, using these certain metrics of, of success and not focusing on yourself. Give yourself some time. You know, you want to, you know, go for a run, go for a run. You want to just do nothing for one day, do nothing for one day. Don't open a, a freaking book. Just, you know, give yourself some time, that alone time, that inner peace, you know, like just by yourself, give yourself time. Um, because like I said, I, I made it my major point of, how can I say this? I made it like my life, just studying, you know, and I never gave myself time. So I would definitely tell her to stop letting your past to find your future stop. So Yeah, no, I love that. That's beautiful advice. Like you are not your past. Your past is just like a platform into your future, basically. I love that. Thank you so much, Crystal. Yeah. Your story yeah. is such an inspiration. I'm really, <laughs> really honored that you would come on my podcast to speak to everybody. So thank no, you. Thank you for inviting me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Engineer Podcast. I hope you feel a lot more aligned to take inspired action. Please join us on our Instagram every Monday to set a soulful STEM statement. And did you know that when you subscribe or rate and review or even join our email list, you get freebies sent directly to you. Just head over to our website, www.engineerpodcast.com for more info. I'll see you next time, STEMIs. Bye for now. And you have officially made it to the advertisement portion of our episodes. The first company that I'm going to highlight is from a dear friend of mine. Her name is Ashley, and her business is named Crowned by Ashley. They provide luxury hair extensions, clip-ins, and wigs at an affordable price that are guaranteed to last over a year with the proper maintenance. Whether you're starting your natural hair journey or are a few years in, looking for a simple, low-maintenance, protective hairstyle, or possibly just wanting to change up your look, 
Crowned by Ashley is your go-to company for affordable luxury hair extensions and wigs in the Los Angeles and Inland Empire areas. Just search at Crowned by Ashley on Instagram and don't forget, your hair is your crown. Next is the Be Well blog by Cheyenne. Be Well is dedicated to giving hope, information, and valuable resources to those that battle with anxiety, like myself, and mental health. Be Well believes that people can find healing and strength in their anxiety journey if they choose to, that they have that power to do. Be Well invites everyone to live in wellness rather than illness. They are committed to combating the stigma surrounding mental health and welcoming everyone to be well. And that's it. So if you are a black or brown business owner that would like to have your business slash company slash blog slash influence advertise at the end of our episodes, you can find that survey on our website, engineerpodcast.com.